Debenham, Cretan St Mary, or St Mary Cretan. During the day I was roaming around the Suffolk countryside searching for ancestors, looking in churches, graveyards, walking around villages, driving around the countryside, having great fun doing my family tree research. It's November now and I'm just going back, reflecting back of August and July last this summer just gone. So here we go. This is carrying on in many ways from um, the previous villages visited. I'm off to Great Beelings now, where we have got links going back in time, which is all found within the family tree. So here we go. Great Beelings, St Mary's Church, in the middle of nowhere. We managed to find it thanks to the lovely lady in the church. We sent me up another track, but this time I came to Great Beelings. Then I just carry on the road, and she said I should come to Little Beelings. I can't remember the connection. I have got it written in my little pink book, wherever that is. Wherever my little pink book is, sometimes I put a link next to it. Um, I don't know where I put my paint book at the moment. Oh, never mind. Just stop him for a minute. Right, well, I had a chat with a chap inside um, St. Mary's Great Beatings. He's a treasurer and they have a rope. <laughs> yeah, that's three people today when I've been, has been looking after the churches. That's three people. They've all provided little snippets of information. And, uh, by, you know, I can't remember the, the actual link at all. I won't but think, because it's over this way, I tend to think it's tied up with the Coptons and the Peshes that side of things more than my Brooks, Masons and Oaks. I tend to think that it's more tied up with that. I'll take another picture of this from this side of the church. Right, well I found Butley Priory, but there was a wedding going on. But it did say private road anyway. But I expect you probably could have walked, gone up there and seen someone as they could have looked around the priory since one of my ancestors built the place. Stupfills, I think it was the Stupfills. What kind of mean these pressures? I get my that well. It's still there and I've got a picture of it now. It's used for weddings. They have to survive, don't they? And then um I'm at, I'm at a, it could be Butley Church I've got to now. I parked outside a house which used to be the old Butley School, it says. I'm going to have a bit of cake. I'm going to have a bit of cake and a cup of tea. Then I'm going to go around look around that church. It's ideal. I haven't come all this way for nothing. And a little bit of cake. Right, here we go again. I had to turn the tape over and I actually put the wrong side on. I went back to Cretan St Mary, so it took me a while to find the actual tape recording. 
So it's a little bit a hodgepodge, and I think I didn't do an awful lot of taping at Great Beatings because I was talking to a gentleman um, inside the church, and I didn't actually tape that. So, although I feel there should have been more tape, and it did end a bit abruptly, and it went straight on to um, Butley, I still feel as if there was a bit of tape. Now, if I ever come up across it, I shall put it put it on. But um, there was a lot of uh, problems with tape recording on this trip. I can't believe how much problems I had losing tapes, taping over. Oh, goodness. Anyway, here we go. I've um, found some reflections and I'm back on track sort of thing. Ending up at Butley. Hello, this is Sheila. It's August the 5th, 2010. And I've been off on one of my travels around Suffolk today. I'm camping up to Burwell and I decided to go over the other side of Suffolk um, just to experience where my where my great ancestors comes from who is Martha Miles who married Richard Brooks. Um, so I went to Mary St. Cretan today I also went to Debenham, this is because um, the Stuttvilles had interest in lots of places. I went to um, Debenham Church and Village and took f lots of pictures there. Um, I've been to Great Great Beelings, that's another one. There are others, but I can't remember them all at the moment, off the top of their head. Um, I then went to Butley, the Priory at Butley, over Woodbridge Way. But um, there was a wedding going on. It did say private, by invitation only, but I thought, well, if there hadn't been a wedding, I would have just gone up. But I went up anyway and took a load of photos of the Priory from outside. At least I know it still exists. Now I've come, as I was coming away up a road towards Orford, I might go to Orford, I might not, I haven't decided yet. I passed a little church, so I thought, I'll just stop there, it's got a thatched roof. In fact, it's, I think it's one of the very few thatched roof churches I've seen. And it's called St. John the Baptist Church, Butley, which is hidden down the bush. Praise ye the Lord, William G. Large, 1881 to 1981, so only lived a hundred. It's very unlikely it will be open now. But the reason for coming this way is really because of the connections with the Stuttvilles. And maybe further back than that. I'm sure it was one of the Stuttvilles that built that a monastery or a priory at um, Butley. They did that sort of thing in those days. Anyway, I've got to keep an eye, eye on the time because it gets dark suddenly. What I'm doing tonight, I'm going to make my way, after here I'm making my way back. Once I get on the A14 there won't be any problem. And I'm um, going to get fish and chips from the local fish and chip shop in Burwell tonight. I've just had a cup of tea and a bit of fruit cake. I'm now going to go and look round the churchyard and take perhaps a few more photos. I've got through an enormous number of instant cameras and cassette tapes are following up close behind. One cassette tape at something, I have to do a bit of repeat, sort of chewing the tape. It does, it these, it does that after a while, these cheaper tape recorders. There's only a lot of use you see. So here we are, this is Sheila, up in Butley in Suffolk, the heart of the Suffolk countryside I'm in. And there's a beautiful church, I'll take another picture of it with its thatch roof. Right, well, the tape's really playing up badly, and I'll have to do that bit where uh, it, it, it hasn't taped anything that I've spoken about for the last ten minutes. It turned itself off. I've got to remember to keep my finger put on the button because it didn't mention the ha Hazelwoods that I was talked about. And there are other families that I'd done over there. Oh, I can't be bothered now. There was a Stebbings 
um, but there was a hazel woods back there. I thought I'd make note of them because hassles are connected to um, us in that way. Yeah, this is not very good, this technical from that point of view. It's cut out a few times. I've managed to keep my finger actually on the button. I don't know if that helps or makes it chew. Anyway, I was just saying, I was coming up to look inside the church window at the back here. There's a geranium in the window. I can see, yeah, it's quite small inside, quite narrow. It's got a nice little ch steps leading up into the tower though. That looked quite interesting. Um, and on the wall it's got another memory of Reverend Charles Luther Wonstall, 24 years, a beloved vicar of this parish who entered into rest the 25th of November 1923. Yeah, there was something about those, there was something else about those stones when I came in. It was the Wesley. There was a Wesley in the name and I thought, well, we've got Brooks connected with that. We've got Hassels connected to the Hazelwood thing. So I'll have to do them again on the way out. So all I'm doing at the moment, I'm just having a look at all these grave graves. I'm having a quick, the, the scatter around, it was probably much bigger. And all I'm doing is having a little look around. Just in case something crops up. We've really had a, a Wesley and a Hasslewood. You never know what you're going to find. There's a John Reed and a Sarah Reed. And a William Thomas Reed and his wife Anne. There aren't many in there. Maybe some have been pulled down by look at it. It was probably quite a good graveyard once. I've had a cup of tea and a bit of cake. And I'm going to have fish and chips. And I get back to Burrowell later. I can't leave it too late, see? Because, um... Got, I'll be, it don't matter once I get on the M14. But, um, you know, you could get lost around here. You've got the um, Rendlesham Forest and all that. I don't want to get lost around there, do I? It's a funny name, what's that? Bum, something like that. Oh, there's a little doggy. I've already met one that was Jack Russell today. Um, when I was in Great Beeland Church, the vic not the vicar, the treasurer there had a little brown Jack Russell. And I was chatting to him, giving a little cuddle, and gun. John Snowden. Just calling out some names really, like I always used to in the past. Not a rock boiler. Always a little clay boy. And Snowden, William Cooper, David Webb, and the Stubbins. Hello, Caroline Stubbin, the dearly beloved daughter of David and Elizabeth Webb, who died October the 8th, 1865. It could be 35 or 55. That's another Stubbing. There, or Cooper. Another Cooper, another Webb. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, it's, it's really sort of early Norman and anglo saxony because of the thatch roof of it. it. Makes it look older than what it is, really. Howard's, more Howard's, Howard family there. Um, just doing a bit... Oh, this guy, that's all. Oh, so you've got the butt, what was the old Butley school behind the church there? I've already taken a bit of a picture of that. They're only doing their duty, those dogs, you know. Barking at strangers. You know. There's a large family here as well. One of them lived to 100 years old. And there's another more Coopers. There are more Coopers. Cooper, and there's some really big vault ones at the back. I'll do them in a minute. It's 
a shame you can't get in the church, I suspect you can, if you've got, um, I'll well, take a picture up close of the church, right, right just take another picture of the church there, there's some like, big tomb like stones, I'm just going back over to these I did earlier, and it wasn't taping, you have to keep your finger on this as it won't flip in tape, and it springs out when you least expect it. So I'm going back over these in a minute. We've got more Coopers. Yeah, Y-Yards, I was talking about as a weird name. Y-Yards, there's a few of those in here. Then going back over here, you've got Albert Wesley Hazelwood, who was suddenly taken away January the 29th, 1884, age 20. In the midst of life, we are in death. Be ye also ready. Also of Maggie Hazelwood, daughter of Robert Wesley and Bessie Hazelwood, who died the 20th of May, 1894, age 11. It could be months. And there are more Hazelwoods. And there's <sighs> an affectionate remembrance of Eleanor, the beloved wife of Robert Hazelwood, who died 14th of February, Valentine's Day, 1874, age 37. That one's well embedded and there's probably him underneath that. Now I'm going over to some others. Oh, we've got a wood here. I'll do, I don't bother with woods usually because that's a common name, isn't it? Sarah Wood. Yeah, it looks like she was only two when she died. I can't even see the date. It looks like could be 1813 or something like that. A lot of them are very colour placard. Thomas Thomas Norton Gatley. He was aged 29 and he died in 1811. He's got a big table-like structure above the ground. There's a few of them like that. Over there in the corner there's a few. Barrel was another name. Then you've got those that look like got big lids. There's a coffin looking one. I rarely come across any of our names there though. Sewell. Edwin Sewell, he died in 1872 on the 11th of June, aged 41. We might have someone else in there. That's an upright table like one above the ground. More sea wells there. This could be a big sea well plot. There's lots of these. They're, they're, they're like altars, you know, big table structures. Who's this? In memory of Charles Bennington of Boyton, who died June 16th, 1866. Age 69, also Edward Bennington, who died October the 17th, 1868, age 70. Also Caroline, wife of Edward Bennington, who died October the 7th, 1872, age 76. So they lived right for old ages, didn't they? We've got, yeah, this, this is an old one, in remembrance of... Nathaniel Bennington, who died August, it's either the first, yeah, the first, 1797, age 43, so that's a very old one. Charles, son of, I don't know, I can't read that, is, is Bennington there again? No, look at the date there. Oh, where else is that? July something, 1795. Yeah, there's a, this is Bennington crew here, and um, we would have had railings around them, you can see the holes where the railings would have been. More Bennington's here. Yeah, more of them. Right, well that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, I've still got, Friday is going to be tied up doing... Um, Borough Green, that's my Borough Green walk, my Borough Green grave tidying. 
And in theory, I've got to leave on Saturday, but you said I don't have to rush to leave. So, I might, I don't know what to do, because I've got the car seat at 4 o'clock on the Monday, but I'm going to have to clean the car up. But I need to get back at night to empty it, because it's a busy road where I live, and uh, I'll have to do it at night. So, I haven't got a lot of money left either, I'm very down on money now. So this was the last big trip today, out researching here. If I do any more, I mean Burwell might have the museum, it was open today, but I had to get this trip done, I'm a little bit behind. I haven't got the money or the funding or the time to do the Buckinghamshire stuff now, Newport Pag now, I haven't got time really, I mean I could leave Saturday morning and spend Saturday and Sunday, but to be quite honest, I, I've, 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 I'm full up, really, I can't afford to buy any more cameras, I've got tapes, Listen, I've already used nearly two cameras today, it's two a day, I've probably got oh, about ten cameras that are going to have to be um, done, developed. Right then, over and out for now, we're off in the car and we're going to find our way home now. I'm not going to Orford, it's at least another four miles, so I decided to leave that. Walking, sorry, I'm now driving through the um, a forest, Rendlesham Forest. It's a, it's a, there's no road markings. It's really only just about wide enough for one car, and you'd have to pull over, I think, if two wanted to cross each other. And there's lots of ferns. It's a, a, a nice warm evening. Uh, it's very remote out here. You wouldn't want to get stuck here in the dark on your own, put it that way. Um, there's lots of tracks, different walks going off. Um, well, I should think if you know where you're going and you're with somebody, it, it would be fine. There's somebody coming, I've just got to let them by. Of course, if a uh, it being the time of the, the Suffolk Strangler, who killed about five or six women, I probably wouldn't be, well I probably still would come out sort of thing, but it would be creepy, because that happened just after me and Zara left, all that happens. So I reckon I could have stayed on that road there, so never mind, we'll find another way around. Got Butley Corner, a place called Capel. Five miles to Orford and five miles to Woodbridge. Midsummer Night Dream tickets for theatre, Rendlesham Forest. There's um, a caravan site here in the forest. wider now, it's not for two, I'm now onto a wider road for two cars with road markings. And of course people go much faster, I'm putting my lights on now. So this is Sheila and Suffolk going along in a little hired car, because she can't afford to have one of her own. And she doesn't want one because the cost, I'd rather just hire one every couple of years. There's people having picnics, not many people. This, that's called Butley, Cor Butley Corner Car Park back there. It's in the forest. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you said, you can have people, it's, bit, you know, it's different, isn't it? You got, you have got, a, I, well, it gets a bit scary on your own, I think, walking in the forest. I think I'd be a bit scared by myself. It's sort of when you, it's like, Western Woods isn't too bad, even that could be creepy. 
Uh, if you were a group of you going off on an organised walk, yeah, that'd be alright. Be nice. A picnic. photos from the mobile phone, which is very important. I haven't touched the phone because it's full up. I don't want to press a button that would erase anything. So that's just been topped up battery-wise and not touched till I get home now. If I have to contact Zara, it'd be from public phone. Um, what else can I say? Yeah, it's been a nice day today. I haven't had to get my umbrella out. I'm back at a place, I'm back at a place I call Bromswell. So I'm driving along, giving you a little commentary as I'm going. I don't know if anyone will ever listen to any of this. But this is Sheila Ancestor Hunter. Um, I had a good day yesterday, and today I'm returning to Bar Green Church to tidy up the grave and put some flowers on. Then I'm going off to um, Great and Little Bradley because that's where other ancestors resided in the past and owned the manors there. Um, the Peverells. Um, there's pressures and all that were owners around that way so I'll be going there later I also wanted to try and fit in a small walk today um, so here we are back at Bar Green I'm, I might be sent another night which might be Saturday night to give me a bit more time to relax a little bit and have a bit more time here we go Right, this is a very weird thing. Yeah, I came here the other day, but looking for Oaks, Brooks, Masons, Isaacs and Stuttbills. Yeah, I came here the other day. I don't know if I got a book like that. I need to come back again because um yeah, I took a picture of that soldier. 
I remember, because I've been doing a bit of work on ancient history, and um, well, I, ne I needed to come back to mainly um, Little Bradley, but I don't think I've got to Little Bradley, but I've actually got all this on record from when I was here the other day. My memory's getting worse. I'm trying to remember why. Why I. I've got to change my trousers, is not to change them because the wasps, the wasps, you know, the connection is with them all is, um, the underhills, the colderbacks, obviously stupfills, peverils, declares, they all have connections with this place and the manor. Um, by 1876, what's that? This video is dedicated to the memory of Frederick Noel Webb of Great Bradley, born at Streetly Hall, Cambridgeshire. Died, um, he was born 1867, died 1923. And his wife, Ida Mary, wife and daughter of Daniel Kent Long of Great Bradley Hall. She was born in 1876 and died in February 1952. Both have interest in churchyard. <sighs> yes, I found out a lot more from uh, the book that I purchased when I went to Kimball Hall. When I went there, I, um, I discovered something. And uh, it was in the book, it was family trees and information about the lost fa families of Suffolk. Right, so I'm going to do a in depth scan. Since I, I remember, I, re I thought I'd come here. I don't think I got around to doing Little Bradley, which is where the inscriptions are apparently. We're inside there. There might be something of relevance, that's why I thought I... There might be some names, might be. It's all such a long time ago, you see. Right, I've just come across a David Underwood, because I'm looking for Underwoods. Or is it Underhill? No, Underhill, not Underwood. Anyway, there's David. He fell asleep in 2007, age 63. So I thought you were under hell. It's like um, Catherine de Pesce married the Aspinall lot, and there's the big Aspinall connection over in um, over that way. But. Um, Basically, she did marry the Stutfers, I do acknowledge that, but the woman who wrote the book hadn't done nothing about that part of it. She hadn't done nothing about the Stutfers, because the third bit is with um, the hospitals. And then there's the Waywoods that they talk about. You see, that could be a big hole in them. I'm just talking two things at once here. This. That could be a big hole next door, see? Yeah, so this is great feelings. I'll take some more. What I've got to remember is that I've put this church on another tape recording, right? And there's also the uh, images of it on other cameras. Well, they're getting developed. 
Okay, look here, we've got an old grave here. Someone died in 1687. Spelt W-D on the footstone. I'll take a picture. Well, yeah, so there's um, WD 1687, and there's another WD 1681. Morden 1698. Born. I don't know, something to like 1698 anyway. Somebody Morden. Could be George, I'm not sure, I can't read it, could be Jeffrey. There's a little tiny graves anyway, next to the big one, so they were little people. It's terrible in memory though, it's only got a vague recollection of coming here. And uh, so I recognise it, I recognise the outside, because I remember describing it. It was looking very plain and that. It's very plain. I'm doing a bit more now because it might have significance later on. I'm just wondering if that's Bradley Hall next door to this church. Stephen Ryder, 1917 to 2003. Yeah, I remember taking a picture of the back of the porch, particularly made out of red brick. And him here, some sort of big garden or something, I don't know. <coughs> it belongs to isn't it? <coughs> it's attached to a church. Could be the rectory. And so there was a lot more stones here, because they were all stacked up against the wall of that barn. Loads of them. Piled up, one behind the other. So there's a lot more people here. This is an example of people getting rid of the stones. So, I mean, the, the record is there, but you, to move these stones would be hard work. There's Taylor's here. Um, this is George Smith and his wife Marianne. Danby. Colvet or Colette. Yeah, I'm just doing a little bit more in this church, so I'm going to Little Braddy. Now I might have been. Right, hold on a minute. I might have to turn over. Um, although, how much have I done now? That's. Um, I'll just turn it over and see. Just to see what that is on that side. Hold on a moment. There might not be anything on that side. Like I said, I've made quite a mess with a lot of the tapes. I mean, this one doesn't seem to want to play, doesn't it? What is on there anyway? Side B. All right. Right, this side B. I've just been to Borough Green to place some flowers on the graves and tidy the graves up and go inside and put a nice lily flower in the cupped hands of Elizabeth de Guerre. While I was outside I met the, a young church warden called Lucy Talbot, that's her married name. She lives in the hall which used to belong to the Lacey's. And um, she, she said to me that there was somebody from Australia over not long ago who was looking for William and Eliza Elston and was hoping to find more information about them and where, where they were buried and that. So I know that an Elston married an oak. In fact, it could have been Samuel Oak that married an Elston. In fact, I think I found a grave of a William and Eliza Elsden. It, it could have been Butley or Clopton or one of those churches not long ago. Anyway, I'm going to end this tape here because um, I've already done that bit as far as I know. If not, it's going to go on another separate tape anyway because I've reached 40 minutes now. So there we go. That's quite a big, um, quite a large section of um, 
recording I've done there. So this is Sheila, 2010, over and out.